I laced up my shoes and packed up my bags on the first day of 740 days ahead. 740 days on a bicycle ride around the world. And as I set out on that very first morning into the wild yonder with a 100-pound bicycle beneath my feet, my greatest adventure was about to begin. Because over the next two years, 35,000 kilometers of cycling lay before me. From southern China, where I was living and working as a teacher, back home to Canada. This solo, unsupported journey took me through 40 countries and five continents. Through Asia, through Europe, Africa, South as well as North America, from the seat of a bicycle. To help fundraise over $50,000 to build five sustainable schoolhouses in five countries around the world. So that young people could go to school in a safe place every single day and pursue some of their greatest dreams and passions in life. 250 acts of kindness, 45 bicycle tubes, 12 tires, six pairs of shoes, two years, and one bicycle later, I made my way back home to Canada. It was an incredible journey to say the least, and I can't wait to share some of those stories with all of you here today. But before I'm able to share some of those stories, I have a quick question for everyone in the audience. How many of you ever, have ever been sitting beside someone on a bus, on a plane, on a train, or even at an event like this, for example, and you want to talk to someone around you that you had never met before, but you just didn't, for whatever reason. Come on, be honest. Yeah, okay, looks like most of us in the audience here, at one point or another, <laughs> petrified by our own fear of how someone might react, so unfortunately we just do nothing. However, all of that fear and nervousness can be solved with one truly simple word, and that is just, hello. Hello, hola, privet, jumbo, namaste, these are just some of the tickets that can be used to help us understand what it means to be human. My bicycle around, ride around the world taught me how we can all contribute to a more united and a more connected world by saying hello just a little bit more often. It also taught me the value of a really nice bicycle seat because let's be honest, all, the, all, the, all, the, all that cycling is a recipe for one incredibly sore butt. However, now that i finished this bike ride and I live back here in Canada, I often get lots of questions about what this journey was like. I get asked, weren't you sore from all that cycling? Um, but the two main questions I get asked, unfortunately, are, weren't you scared and weren't you lonely? Now, the short and sweet answer to that question is no, because, I mean, for the most part, I never needed to be. And I'll explain why a little bit later. But the very fact that that question is top of mind for many people is a testament to the level of trust that we're willing to give those that we share our planet with. Because one of the main reasons why I set out on this adventure, on this journey around the world in the first place, was actually just to meet people. I'd done a fair amount of traveling before this. I'd done motorcycle trips through places like Mongolia, through Laos, as well as China. I backpacked through incredible places like Myanmar, through Bangladesh, as well as Panama. But I always felt on these trips like there was something missing. I always seemed to find myself on a bus, on a train, or even on my motorcycle, racing past all the people that actually made up the country where I was traveling as I headed off that next big site that I had to see. However, I found these places that I had to see really didn't make me much happier. The happiest moments on my cycling journey around the world were actually those moments of true, genuine human connection laughing and learning alongside people. And so I chose the bicycle as a slow ticket, keyword there, slow, as a slow ticket to enable more of those special moments to happen. Or at least, so I hoped. However, after a, a few weeks of cycling, back when I started this bike ride back in China, after a few weeks, I found myself hopelessly lonely. I thought for some reason at the beginning of this trip that people would just come up and talk to me because obviously I was so naturally interesting. <laughs> found it pretty quickly, that was a hard no, that was not the case. And I found it really difficult to meet people at the beginning of this journey. I thought for some reason, as I said, that people would just come up and talk to me. I thought I was so worried on a budget of less than $10 a day, how someone else might react if I went up to them, said hello, and asked for a safe place to camp. As if they would suddenly turn into some sort of monster and chase me down the street with a broom just for asking. All things that you kind of conjure up in your mind as you're cycling alone for, for days. Because for days, it seemed like the only person that I was talking to was, you guessed it, myself. And I acknowledged that that needed to change and that needed to change pretty quickly. And so fed up with how things were going over the last few weeks, I said to myself, naturally, because, you know, 
Um, I said to myself, the next person that you meet, you need to go up to them, say hello, smile, you can do it, and ask for a safe place to camp for the night. You've got this. It's not that scary. And the next man that I asked was absolutely thrilled at the idea. In no time at all, I had my bicycle wheeled into their courtyard. I had my tent set up right in front of his home. I don't know why I needed to be that close, but it was. And I, and I, I sat down to this amazing meal of spicy style Szechuan food in central China. And as I sat down to this incredible meal, I was sipping some piping hot Chinese green tea and sharing stories from the, my travels with his family that I just met about five minutes before that, and my face was hurting. And it was hurting because for the first time on this trip, I was smiling from ear to ear. And I thought, maybe I'll try this saying hello thing again tomorrow. And that's exactly what I did. And the next night, I found myself camped out at a monastery. The night after that, I found myself at a police station. <laughs> Fortunately though for me, not behind bars, I was welcome to stay in one of the many offices from the incredibly kind police that worked there. And then the night after that, I found myself camped out next to a beautiful lake under a beautiful set of stars later that night. And this continued over the next two years. And over the next two years, I practiced saying hello every single day. And I mean, it took some getting used to, but eventually, throughout the course of my journey, it allowed me to become the humble recipient of over 250 acts of kindness. 250 times where people went out of their way to help me. Yeah, me. This guy. <laughs> this dirty, white, privileged, confused looking guy on a bicycle with a big beard. However, I'm not talking about someone just helping to fill up my water bottles, because that happened pretty much every day, and I was so grateful that people were doing that, considering some of the places around the world I was traveling. What I'm talking about is someone meeting me for about five minutes, welcoming me into their home, or offering me a safe place to camp, or refusing to let me pay for bicycle parts. And I was often traveling through some of the most difficult parts of our planet. And now in my daily life, as well as my work as a speaker and as facilitator, it's my goal to continue to pay forward those acts of kindness on a regular basis. Because all this was possible, because eventually, and the key word here again is eventually, I was ready and willing to walk up to someone, look them in the eye, see them for who they were as a person, say hello, and start the conversation. And make one of the most powerful connections of all a human connection. Sometimes, though, even I needed to remind myself to assume that kindness first instead of that negative alternative that our mind often goes to as we're meeting someone new or even crossing someone late at night. Because I cycle, as I cycled across the border from Uzbekistan into Afghanistan, my heart was beating out of my chest, adrenaline pumping into every single vein of my body, and my senses on high alert as I made my way into the country. And I mean, I'll be the first to admit, even though I've been practicing this saying hello thing for the last couple months, I was going in with some pretty strong stereotypes, some pretty negative thoughts of what I might encounter as I cycled across the border into Afghanistan alone on a bicycle. However, all of that fear and nervousness was shattered as soon as I crossed into Afghanistan and a young man came up to me and he said, hello. And he asked, what's your name on Facebook? <laughs> All of my preconceptions, yeah, amazing, right? All of my preconceptions were immediately disarmed, and the days after, every person I met was so incredibly welcoming to me. I like this man right here, Haj Abdul, who welcomed me into a shop and sat me down and insisted that we ate together and shared the stories of our lives. He'd seen incredible changes throughout his lifetime, uh, through kings, through war, prosperity, and decline of his country. But at the end of our conversation, he leaned in and he said to me, he said, soon my time here is going to be finished. He said, this is your time to make a change. In an age of negative news stories that perpetuate our feeling of fear of each other as well as the rest of the world, what is not recycled on repeat are the stories of good. And personally, I cannot remember the last time I heard a good story coming out of Afghanistan. However, on this journey around the world, I found the opposite of what I was always told or made to believe. And because I went into Afghanistan with the sole intent to learn, to explore, and to meet the people that lived there, it ended up being the kindest country of my entire journey. And I experienced similar levels of kindness because I went into places like Sudan, South Africa, Colombia, Mexico, and I found that in these places, that all these people are just that, people wanting some of the same things in life, things like food, things like water, shelter, but also 
human connection. And this last one, fortunately for all of us, is one that we have the opportunity to influence on a regular basis, surrounded by a sea of people that we normally don't talk to. Each and every one of us has the power to make that human connection. Because I did on this cycling journey around the world what all of us have the power to do each and every day. And I'm not telling you that you need to go out and ride a bicycle around the world in order to meet people. I'm not telling you you need to do that. But what I'm saying is each and every one of us in our daily lives, we have the opportunity to make a human connection and be open-minded enough to receive that connection in turn. Marcus Aurelius was an ancient Roman Stoic as well as emperor, and he once said, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself and your way of thinking. And as a huge advocate of Stoicism myself, I truly believe that if we do the hard things first and we do them each and every day, the reverberating effects felt throughout our world will be astounding. And so my ask of all of you, my simple challenge for all of you now, is to go out into the world, to start that conversation, and to say more often and with confidence to one another a simple hello. A la prochaine, hasta la vista, zai jen, all. See you later.